The only justification for an ethnostate is another ethnostate. And this is the paradox of Zionism. It is the determination of the Palestinians that saves the self-determination of the Jews. I've read the Palestinians, and they're crystal clear in their writings, their movement, their charters, their polls, and their podcasts, that they desire nothing less than a Palestinian ethnostate. And there is no reason to prefer one ethnostate to another. Zionism is just in light of its alternative. The central claim of Palestinian anti-Zionism is that Israel is a settler colonial society, society being the operative word. This is an extremely grave charge. It is a far graver charge than human rights violations. It is a far graver charge than apartheid or even genocide. How, Kate Saad, for human rights violations, apartheid and genocide are crimes of doing. And since they are crimes of doing, a country, a society, or a people can undo them. But settler colonialism can never be undone because settler colonialism is a crime of being. It is a mark of Cain, a scarlet letter, the circumcision of sin burned into the flesh of every one of the seven million Jews who live here. The accusation of settler colonialism does not differentiate between general and Girl Scout, between special forces and students in special education. It is a totalizing, essentializing, and collectivizing claim. There is a misconception that Palestinian anti-Zionism only runs two tiers deep, that there are Palestinians who criticize Zionist policies, and there are Palestinians that criticize the existence of a Zionist state. In fact, Palestinian anti-Zionism goes much deeper than this. It is not two, but three tiers. Palestinians claim that the policies of the Zionist state are illegitimate, Palestinians claim that the existence of the Zionist state is illegitimate. Palestinians claim that the existence of the Zionist society is illegitimate. The accusation of settler colonialism does not discriminate between the state and the society. A society whose presence is held to be illegitimate is one that is exposed to obvious danger. Therefore, the Zionist state, Israel, is required to ensure security for the Zionist society. The existence of the state of Israel is a matter of human rights. The state of Israel is therefore a human being, not like a human being, not as a human being. The state of Israel, if we're talking morals, if we're talking justice, is a human being. I have one more point. I know I've gone on a little long. I promise it's worth it. Zionism is supposed to be about Jewish independence. And yet the justice of Zionism is dependent on the Palestinians. It is the Palestinians who rescue Zionism from the brink of immorality. In the language of Jewish mysticism, in the language of the Kabbalah, one can say that the Palestinians are akin to the divine aspect, the Sphira of Malchut. They are the final stage in the unfolding of Jewish peoplehood. Palestinians rescue the Jewish state project. They guard secular Jewry by refusing social intercourse and intermarriage. They enable us to fulfill our divine vocations. The nations of the world come to Israel and they tell us very clearly, they don't want our literature. They don't want our music. They don't want our high technology. They don't want our watercolor paintings. The nations of the world want our Torah. They want our moral leadership. Do we provide it to them? Absolutely not. We're not even close. But the Palestinians put the focus on the moral dimension of the conflict. And that is the Jewish people's bread and butter. So it is for these services, saving Zionism, saving secular Jewry, centering the conflict on justice, that we Zionists owe the Palestinians our gratitude. And more than that, we owe them a state that spans the West Bank, Gaza, with a capital in East Jerusalem.